The Phillies moved to two and one in the NLCS after losing two to one. That's such a weird stat to me. How often and ra- rarely do you see your standard, your standings in the series the same as what the score was? But that's what kind of day it was in game three as the Phillies dropped their first loss and should hopefully be the lone loss to the Diamondbacks. Jamie Lynch, Renee Washington in our post game show for PHOY Phillies podcast. We took time in the course of the hour plus to really dive into the things we liked, the things we didn't like. A lot of positives that we took away from it. Ranger Suarez, one of them. Oddly, yeah. (laughs) A lot of positives. um, But also some things that we we look at and we're like, this needs to be better. It's time to make adjustments, Jamie. There have been things we've talked about on this show specifically that have continuously been happening that we've been letting slide a little bit. But it's time after looking at that loss, that to me was kind of the moment of, nope, Time to make a change. What yeah. were some of those for you? Yeah, well, I thought Rob Thompson was great in the game uh, itself from you know, the defensive adjustments. I can't roast him for bringing in Kirkering there in the seventh. I thought that was good after Hoffman and Alvarado after him uh, was spectacular. You know, you got a four, a six, four, three double play that hasn't happened in the history of postseason baseball. <laughs> you got a guy thrown out at home plate. He did everything from a managerial standpoint to win you a game. Now tonight. Bowman and Stott are the two guys that have been killing you a little bit. Um, and it's strange because Stott has kind of been the most consistent hitter on the team this year. He had a costly double play last night. Yeah. Uh, I don't really move him much in the order, but I might look when the lineup gets released today to see if he tinkers at all with the, the four hole and Alec Bohm. I personally would probably put JT in there and move Bohm down to like, six or seven, depending how you want to do that righty lefty with him and Stott. Uh, I might move Castellanos up. So that's something I'm definitely going to be paying attention to today. Yeah, it was a very odd night. Um, Obviously for the Phillies as a whole to just have a total of three hits is something you don't see often, but you know, Stott, one of those guys, zeros across the board. Nick Castellanos, a very quiet night. But I will say consistently Nick Castellanos and JT have been better at that. So Frankly, Bone's been bad struggling. At the, Bone's at the been plate. really struggling. He's been good in the field, bad at the plate. Had a play, obviously, for an RBI in the 10 0 victory, but everybody had a play in that victory at some point. Um, but when you look bigger picture, come postseason, especially since the NLDS, yeah. Bohm hasn't really been, a- been able to find a groove. And we've seen the frustration. We talked about it on the show, the throwing of the helmets. He's, he's, he's out of it. And I think that four spot coming after Bryce has been a really tough spot. And especially after last night, you know, they're not giving Bryce anything to hit. You really need that spot to come through for you. Um, That can't be a spot that kills you. And then, of course, I think this is a Rob Thompson game, not only because of that and does he make changes there, but Christopher Sanchez is getting the start. How long of a leash does he get? If he's great, obviously you let him go. But then is Michael Lorenzen backing him up? Is Taiwan Walker backing him up? Who's that middle relief guy for you if he can't come through for you? And I'll say it. I'm shocked Christopher Sanchez is starting over Taiwan Walker. Uh, I think big balls by Rob to make a tough decision because you paid Taiwan Walker $85 million to come Mm -hmm. be the team's number four. Christopher Sanchez earned it ahead of Taiwan Walker, but usually the salary kind of dictates those kind of moves and decisions. Uh, so kudos to Rob Thompson for going with Christopher Sanchez tonight. Well, ironically, my one change, is, along with Alec Bohm, is in the bullpen. I do think something that we've seen consistently is Rob Thompson having that short leash. But I do think at this point, it's time to let guys go a little bit longer. And Jose Alvarado is a great example of a guy that's been steady and consistent and doing fantastic coming in. And I'd love to see Alvarado go a little bit longer because, as we know, one inning can change all the momentum. It was Orion Kirkering, seventh inning, three hits given up, one run given up. And you wonder if after Bryce scores that run off of the wild pitch, if the Phillies are able to get out and have a, a nice one nothing lead heading deeper into the game, if this is a 3-0 game, a 3-0 series, excuse me, that we're talking about coming into tonight with a chance to sweep. So I'd love to see a little bit more patience. I feel like Rob is trying too hard to manage guys' arms and keep them fresh at the expense of sometimes – a run, a, you know, a, a stretch of hits. So I think that's one thing I'd like yeah, to Yeah, it worked him. leading up to last night. Um, so we'll see yeah. how he adjusts going forward. Something to keep an eye on. I think this is a Rob Thompson game. Uh, he's been hitting all the right buttons. I got faith in him. I think you do too. So 
Uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Yeah, hopefully you guys are hitting all the right buttons too. Like, subscribe, follow, and we'll see what happens. Of course, post-game show coming right after game four. Uh, Philly's looking to take the 3-1 lead tonight. I'm feeling confident, Jamie. In the uh, Philly, yeah, they're going to get it done. Bats it's going to happen. It's, this, this series is over in five, so see you post-game for more. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.